This video is for all my fellow Magicka DK players. I've been playing Magicka DK for a very long time. It is a probably the most fun class to play. Maybe next to like Magicka Necro or Magblade, which is also one of my favorite characters to play, Magicka Nightblade. One of the biggest problems with Magicka DK is hands down it has been Ever since they nerfed Battle Roar, it's been their sustain, which typically leads you to either build for either damage and survivability and then not have the greatest sustain, or to build for sustain and some sort of damage and have minimal survivability. Typically on most Magicka DK builds, you don't have it all, especially by comparison to Stamina DK. Stamina DK, hands down, arguably has better dots than Magicka DK. Their version of Burning Embers is way better, especially since it ramps up over time with damage. The poison that you get from it deals more damage than the burning. You get a little bit of sustain, but it's not really much of a matter because especially when you look at other abilities that will basically reduce, as it says here, the passive world and ruins decreases the cost of stamina poison abilities by 25%. Stamina already has cheaper abilities, much easier to heavy attack on stamina build on stamina builds, especially like if you're running a dual wield um, stamina DK, super easy to dual wield and basically get some region in while dealing really good damage and of course being able to sustain your dots. So you arguably get better sustain and better damage in a build that is, you know, Magicka DK is supposed to be the attrition build. It's basically the design to kind of will your opponents down. And unfortunately, their dots have been nerfed to the point where they're almost not worth running. I stopped running Burning Embers because one, it's too expensive, and two, it really doesn't deal that much damage, especially because it got nerfed for PvE. So to diminish the rotation, in PvE, they increase the time. 10 seconds to 12 seconds, and now the 14 seconds. And so basically what that does is, is each tick is weaker. Now by comparative, the reverse actually occurred with Stamina DK. Because you increase the length of time that the dot ticks, it increases in damage every time it ticks by a percentage. And so since you increase the time period, you naturally increase the damage. And of course, Magic of DK, the healing portion of this of the ability was based off of a percentage of the damage. So you nerf the damage, you extend the duration, you then nerf the healing. On top of that, they increased the cost of the ability and it just made the ability useless for PvP. At least in the terms of dealing damage, because it really doesn't deal a lot of damage. As you can see based off of the tooltip. So most skilled Magic of DKs typically utilize Burning Embers... For the swipe. So you would swipe once, and then originally the way that it worked is the you got the first tick up front. So that allowed you to swipe a little bit earlier for the mini heal that you would get from burning embers. Also, because whip is fairly expensive, you didn't sit there and just spam whip. You typically utilize whip when you got a power lash, because previously the power lash was free. Then, of course, the power lash got a cost which further increased the cost to magic of dk's who already had a nerfed sort of uh, region because of nerfed battle war and very expensive skills and then they nerfed the damage and then they nerfed the healing so going back to burning embers this made burning embers almost useless because you would use burning embers in between for the damage so since uh, if you didn't have a power lash ready you would arguably make sure all your dots were up Kind of turtle for a second, re-swipe to gain your healing, and then go back into your rotation of fossilizing into a double whip or leap into a double whip, etc. Basically, that was basically the rotation, so you didn't burn all of your resources just sitting there spamming whip, because whip is very expensive. Engulfing got the exact same treatment. It was primarily, again, a nerf to PvP because of PvE, so that... Basically, people who utilize engulfing, which is typically a PvE tank, didn't have to work it as often in the rotation. And so it saved them Magicka while keeping that debuff up longer. That, that of course, was again a nerf to Magicka DK in PvP because the damage was not did not correspond. So now it cost more 
and then of course its its damage was extended over a longer period of time which means each tick of the damage is weaker which makes it much easier to heal through especially in this patch where everybody's basically been given a free 1000 um 1000 extra spell damage or weapon damage you know once you reach level 50 you basically gain an extra 1000 of that particular resource um which of course magic and dk also gets it but it doesn't benefit as much because the damage is already nerfed so percent wise it gives you a little bit more but it's again because it's divided over 14 seconds it's divided over seven ticks it makes each tick still lack luster and then of course you do get a little bit of damage you get an extra 10 percent but because of the ex because of the cost it's far more expensive now if you utilize power if you utilize um the other morph of this which i i typically don't use one because it's super predictable gameplay because the gameplay requires you to spam one of these abilities at least three times or to work these abilities in a rotation now both of these abilities are damage over time abilities and they're not meant to be spammed which made that sort of gameplay utilizing these two abilities very costly which either forced you to work more regen into your rotation which then nerfs your damage or it or it be, or it became very predictable because you know the person has to swipe twice or you're going to see the person use spam engulfing more than once or the person is either going to spam flames of oblivion or if they're using the healing version they'd sit there and spam it multiple times ccu and then of course it would utilize the the ability now this makes fighting against that person super predictable in terms and then of course when they don't have the whip proc up it makes the rest of their abilities it fairly weaker because there's there's literally nothing else in terms of the D dk kit that most of those individual you would individuals would utilize which makes fighting against those builds especially if you're a skilled player makes it really predictable and easy to time to know when this person is going to hit me with their burst because it's so overly simplistic and of course that person then has to turtle for a little while if that person then for example um you utilizes like um a cc immunity pot it basically puts that rotation on a longer cooldown. Magic of DK is the only class. If you're not utilizing, for example, um, burning talents for the for the root to basically then proc the power lash, and that person, the only way that you're able to proc it is when the person gets CC'd and of course they're rooted, and then you have to whip them. That makes that whole rotation really expensive by comparison to, for example. <clears throat> by comparison to for example nightblade which literally just requires you to light attack you literally just have to light attack a few times and you get the equivalent of a much stronger power lash in terms of damage same thing with for example with sorks sorks will typically just utilize their their spammable which is force shock or even any even during their rotation with it, whatever else they're using whether it's curse will proc the ability of the equivalent of a ranged version of um, Flame Lash for, the, for basically the burst portion, because that, that's basically the proc. So those are the two other abilities that work very similarly, and they both work better in terms of damage. And both of them also heal, although not as much as Magicka DK. The only difference is, is that Magicka DK is locked in a rotation, whereas those other classes are not. Which makes this makes gaining access to that proc extra damage much more expensive you've got to utilize a flame lash and then you've got to utilize a form of cc and then whip the person again for the power lash so arguably it costs around 7,000 magica to gain access to one power lash and that's very expensive for ability whereas again like on a on a magica night blade all you've got to do is light attack three or four times to get four or five times to gain access to the equivalent of burst damage and on sork all you've got to do is just literally keep working in your damage rotation of what arguably is a very cheap skill that is at range on a class that has a much better resource management than magic dk now magic dk typically is not known for its mobility for the most part because it usually at least on one bar it's stuck in sword and shield because you don't have mobility so you basically end up fighting multiple opponents which is why i have always utilized 
um, one version of Burning Talons, right? Especially because I run, especially because I run Burning Spellweave on my back bar. So it basically, if I'm fighting multiple opponents, I have access to both both of these abilities that will proc Burning Spellweave, and of course, I can utilize Power Lash when the person is not able to get CC, right? So at least that at least gives me. Plus, it's a much better dot, and it has a synergy attached to it. By comparative to wasting, you know, resources for burning, for burning, uh, for burning embers. Talking also about, um, let's say, like if you're fighting another DK who utilizes a staff on the front bar, because I've always favored utilizing a staff on my uh, a sword and shield on my front bar, I can mitigate much more damage fighting other DKs who might go, for example, Destro and. Um, sword and shield on the back bar so i can mitigate almost all of their burst because i run sword and shield on the front bar and i have better access to better healing because of power lashing and if you're fighting multiple opponents typically most of those dks can't stand their ground because they end up getting turtled on their back bar and they usually have their heal on their back bar so what happens is they end up getting turtled on their back bar and they're not able to go into a more offensive rotation which is why i've always favored magic dk sword and shield now, since most DKs typically don't use uh, empowering chains for the mobility, just because Magic a DK doesn't have any room, you have to have your spammable, you have to have some sort of healing, you got a CC, you're either going to use Flames of Oblivions or you're going to use the other healing morph, you've got your, um, your armor buff, you've got wings, you're using one version of wings, I typically like um, utilizing wings, um, primarily because you get pelted from range so often that... At least you can use one version of the damage of the damage version, or you can use the one that gives you access to um, removing roots. And typically, most Magic DKs are going to utilize engulfing. So for the most part, your flex spot is typically going to be here. And some DKs might swap this out for for embers depending upon their build, which makes utilizing chains really 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 situational. You've got a lot of other abilities. For example, there are not many DKs that utilize. Um, inhale because inhale is super weak it doesn't really give you a lot of healing as the healing is based off of the damage and of course the damage gets cut in half just like the healing does so as you can see the tooltip on mine really very lackluster it's really obvious the secondary explosion most people just roll dodge right out of the secondary explosion and if you're not utilizing for example um, burning talons then it makes it much harder to get someone get multiple opponents basically clumped up and stuck to eat the secondary portion now i would utilize this more if for example the um the more for example draw essence if draw essence instead of restoring a portion of the magicka based off of the healing gave you minor magicka steel then it becomes worth it or, or one of their abilities gives them uh, at the very least this ability because at least you get a little bit of healing and then now you have a little bit of regen instead of the regen being tied to how many opponents you have the other problem is is that the heal is really really inferior the more opponents you have obviously the more damage that you're taking and so draw essence or um i should say inhale should compensate you maybe more based off of the people or not have it bypass the person's uh, have it bypass the person's he um, magic resist something to make the heal worth it because as you can see it has a really high cost very mediocre damage the secondary explosion as you can see the tooltip is 6k which means even before mitigation it's 3k right so you can easily shave maybe 30 percent off of it making it really inferior in terms of damage and even more inferior in terms of healing because as you can see the heal is 3k that gets cut in half in pvp and that's before mitigation and the heal is based off of the damage makes this ability useless that's why that's why you don't see most magic dks run it now in terms of most of the abilities on the back bar no Magic of DK is going to utilize Ash Cloud. It's worthless. No one's going to stand it. It's super expensive. And then, of course, it is relegated to a PvE ability. Very similar with Obsidian. Far too expensive for what it's useful for. You do get a little bit of stamina regen out of it. And this is another problem with Magic of DK is that you end up losing, I believe it is um, the, the secondary portion here. That when you, whenever you utilize a 
ability from earth and heart you gain a little bit of alt regen but typically since the only ability that you're going to utilize is one version of either shattering rocks or the other version then it puts that that's that secondary portion that you should get every six seconds on a rotation of every seven seconds so you lose a little bit of the region if the person utilizes for example like, like i said before a pot that makes them immune to crowd control then you just lose that whole duration for 21 seconds making this portion of the ability useless most mag dk's don't utilize molten whip has no functionality for them far too expensive to utilize no magic and dk typically is going to use any version of stone fist um just because it's just not worth using and it's very rare to see any magic and dk utilized maybe if you're fighting in a group and you want to utilize um for example uh magma shell so that your group so that your group gets a little bit of fucking notifications so that your group gets a little bit of a damage shield which i really like using for pvp obviously you're not going to use corrosive because it's worthless and that puts magic and dk kit in terms of being able to deal damage by comparative to many other builds very mediocre so right? you really don't see a lot of magic and dk's very fun to play probably my ideally my favorite class i play i pvp with this class very often really fun for for small for uh, small scale battlegrounds maybe imperial city but for open world because of the lack of the mobility and because you're going to get pelted from range makes it a very lackluster choice in terms of pvp one of the easiest ways to fix and make magicka dk much better at the very least would be to give them some form of of uh cost reduction at the very least to abilities like engulfing and especially to burning embers to increase the damage of burning embers so that it then becomes a much more uh a viable heal and then maybe access to i don't know a better alt maybe better alt regen a slightly better alt regen some way shape or form but for me my biggest thing is has always been um the regen the, the lack of regen even if you build for it you get mediocre damage and of course if you want to go for damage the other more for flame lash is super predictable to fight against that a competent player really shouldn't lose to a to a magic of dk just because they don't have any damage you know, engulfing isn't really going to do any damage they're going to swipe for burning embers burning embers doesn't deal any real damage so the vast majority of their damage is going to come just from a cc into a whip and that's super predictable all you got to do is just keep your healing up immediately cc break and roll dodge and then just rinse and repeat it becomes really predictable to fight against and you'll see most of those dks um, might utilize for example standard to get the prop standard or standard does absolutely no damage as you can see by the tooltip gets cut in half very very lackluster ability and of course most people don't like i said don't even use empowering change which actually is a decent ability for like hunting down night blades or streaking magic uh, streaking sorks but since you don't have room for it typically on your bar it makes uh, a, a class like dk that has limited mobility and limited abilities to basically hold its ground especially when it comes to the healing and being able to deal damage basically my spiel really love magic dk would we'll love to see some changes to make magic dk a little bit more damage oriented or at least increase their survivability so that they can out sustain their opponents especially since that's what the entire kit is designed to do